you know, Donald Trump did not um, descend from a spaceship. I mean, he um, uh, and most of the people who voted for him, uh, I don't know, overwhelmingly, uh, like, you know, into the 90s uh, in terms of percentage, voted for Mitt Romney. They voted for John McCain. The Republican Senate enables this guy. Uh, any two or three senators on the Republican side could shut everything down. Um, they haven't. They have done a poor job of oversight. They have done a poor job of containment in the uh, public um, the realm. I mean, th- they are culpable. And um, w- what is curious to me, you know, and, and every time I see this, we're we're hearing now a lot about Bill Barr, right? Uh, the 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 president's pick to be um, uh, the new attorney general. This guy has been going on television basically saying that, you know, the president uh, should be above any of these uh, criminal investigations. And yet there's a lot of like, whew, thank goodness we got somebody who uh, worked in the in the Bush administration. Are, are you as comfortable with this guy as everyone else seems to be? Or is it just like, oh, we could have done much worse. It could have been. Judge Janine or whatever her name is, or <laughs> G- Piero on uh, Fox. or Well, I mean, there is that. Yeah, I mean, he could have done worse. He did do worse. I mean, Matt Whitaker is far less qualified right. to do this job, for instance, than, than Bill Barr is. I mean, Bill Barr is, you know, as far as a resume is concerned, he's someone who has the qualifications. He's been the attorney general before. So, yeah, I mean, he is a better choice than Matt Whitaker, just in, in that regard. Um, but uh, no, of course I'm not. I'm not, you know, in any way comforted by this because of the fact that Barr was chosen for the same reason that Matt Whitaker was, because Trump knows that he's been read, writing op-eds and going on TV and being quoted in the New York Times, defending him. That's the whole point for Trump is he wants his Roy Cohn. He said it. You know, he says I, he wants somebody. That's why he fired Jim Comey, because Comey refused to, to you know, sign on to his loyalty oath. And he believes that that job of attorney general is there to protect him. That's what he's supposed to be doing. And he demands that whoever is in that job, that that's what they do. I mean, he never forgave Jeff Sessions for that. So this is obvious to me. He would not pick Barr if Barr hadn't been in some respects, doing exactly what Matt Whitaker did, which is, which is, uh, you know, audition for the job in the media. And Barr, uh, you know, also apparently was, was, you know, just was asked or considered to be hired as Trump's uh, personal legal representative. He was supposed to, he came in and they, they wanted him to come on board to represent him in these, in these various matters. And Barr said no, which is interesting that he said no at the time. Maybe he was angling to be attorney general again. I don't even know what the reasoning there was. You didn't but, think he was going to uh, get paid. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, that was actually one too. of the stories that going around that no lawyers want to work for Trump because they don't think they're going to get paid. And it's certainly and, and not going right. to be great for their resume. <laughs> Yeah, and they're right. And Barr didn't need anything on his resume. He's got a fine resume. He doesn't right. need that. So, you know, who knows? But, you know, it, it for whatever reason, he didn't do it. But it does show that Trump has had him on the radar for a long time. He he wants him on his team. He thinks he is a Roy Cohn for him. And we have good reason to believe so. And it's not just because he, you know, A, he has a long history of backing pardons. He, back, he was the attorney general when H.W. Bush pardoned half of his cabinet. Uh, and basically pardoned himself in the process, right. although not technically, uh, on Christmas Eve in 1991 or 1992. Uh, and, you know, Barr backed him on that and said he was perfectly legal. He's also got an expansive view of executive power and executive privilege. All those things are part of this. It's also true, though, that he's been saying some weird stuff about, you know, Clinton and the uranium scandal and those need to be investigated. So he's got some right wing fever swamp stuff stuff going on, too. I don't know how much he watches, you know, Fox News, but it sounds like maybe a little more than the attorney general should be doing. So that is concerning. On the other hand, let me just throw this out here. You know, when Nixon fired Archibald Cox, was big brouhaha, and he he ended up being forced to, to replace him against his will. And he replaced him with Leon Jaworski, who had, who was a Texas, you know, a right-wing conservative Texas judge who uh, Nixon had called on earlier 
as well to come and be part of his defense and uh, to do the job of of, uh, of the, the special counsel at the time. And Jaworski had turned him down. And mm. then after they fired Archibald Cox, he gets a call from Alexander Haig, who said, you know, Leon, he needs you. That's the line that's quoted. And so Leon Jaworski came to Washington, and he had given, he had donated to Nixon twice. He was very much a doctrinaire Republican, or right winger. He was technically a Democrat, but he's from Texas, so in those days it was right wing. And um, and he ended up once he saw the evidence, he no longer could justify even to himself that he could do that. So I'm not suggesting that Barr is that person. Republicans aren't like that anymore. They're all just you know tribal partisans. But you never know. I mean, I guess it's possible that if he sees what Mueller has, he'll go, whoa, you know, this is too much. I don't want to pin my right. reputation on doing that. And maybe that's all we can hope for at this point that somebody says, you know, you know, treason, maybe not. Maybe I can't really roll with the treason thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm out. Um, but that's about it. You know, and I think, you know, Barr is not going to be he's not my idea of a good attorney general. That's for sure. Well, it definitely feels, and and maybe I, this is just my own projection, but it definitely feels like the urgency um, to get information from the Mueller investigation has um, receded a bit. That there is a sense that like he cannot be fired or won't be fired in the short term. I I, I mean I think mm-hmm. that's a mistake maybe to assume that uh, Donald Trump is pretty erratic. Uh, but it does feel like there's enough stuff out there that people are taking a half a step away from Donald Trump and are that you might have trouble finding more people like a bar to go on television and say this is this is a joke. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, that we're seeing like the um, the deployment of the lower end of the spectrum in terms of quality of pundits, let me say. Um, <laughs> and, and and part of that is, I mean, just think about the, like the past uh, two weeks, what we learned about uh, Michael Cohen, what we learned about Manafort with the um, alleged Russian spy, um, uh, Butina being, um, uh, you know, supposedly cooperating and her relationship to the NRA, uh, which we're going to be talking about, uh, we talked about in this show. Um, the there it it's starting to get to look a lot like Fitzmiss, if you'll recall. <laughs> I uh, do. But um, I guess we're going to have to wait and see um, as to whether uh, Mueller has more stuff to uh, drop on us over the next couple of weeks, or is everybody going to take a little vacation for Christmas and come back? But a lot of this stuff seems to be. Um, released in anticipation of a Democratic House, and it'll be yeah. interesting to see what that means. But, Heather, as always, a real pleasure. Uh, thanks so much for your time today. 